Cause aircraft, trains, and ships, these transportations have one thing in common: the engines, or more specifically, the internal combustion engines. Nowadays, a regular petrol car will have an internal combustion engine with a four-stroke cycle, which is also known as an auto cycle. The auto cycle was named after the German engineer Nicolas Otto, who designed the auto engine in 1876. The auto engine was the most efficient engine by the time it was built, and it was then improved to the engines we see today. Petrol engines, which may look very different, but the mechanics has always been the same. To demonstrate how the auto engine works, we will use a 2D simplification. The piston is encased in an airtight housing and can move vertically up and down. It is attached to a crankshaft, which converts its linear momentum into a rotational one. At the top of the housing are two valves, intake and exhaust, and a spark plug used to ignite the fuel. The auto engine is a four-stroke engine, a stroke being a complete extension or retraction of the piston. In a full cycle, the piston will perform two extensions and two retractions. These are called the intake, compression, power, and exhaust strokes, respectively. We will use a PV diagram to keep track of the state of the gas inside the cylinder. The first stroke is the intake stroke. It begins with the piston fully extended. The intake valve is opened and a fuel-air mixture flows into the cylinder as the piston retracts. This is a constant volume process as the cylinder is open to the universe. Second is the compression stroke. The intake valve closes, sealing the cylinder. Then the piston extends, compressing the fuel-air mixture in an adiabatic compression. Note that up to now, it's the momentum of the crankshaft that's been moving the piston. Third is the power stroke. Once the cylinder is maximally compressed, the spark plug ignites the fuel-air mixture. Heat is added through the ignition, rapidly increasing the pressure in the cylinder. The gas undergoes a rapid adiabatic expansion, which pushes the piston down, adding momentum to the crankshaft. Finally, comes the exhaust stroke. The exhaust valve is opened and the piston extends, pushing the exhaust fumes out of the cylinder. As the cylinder has been unsealed, there is a rapid drop in pressure, as seen in beads A. Excess heat is absorbed by the piston head and casing. Add all this together, and you get the auto cycle. In reality, the ideal engine is impossible to exist since there are lots of processes which can lead to loss of energy. This diagram shown here is the actual auto PV diagram. The shape of the PV diagram for actual and ideal auto engine are similar, but the work done by the actual engine show as the enclosed area in this diagram. It's much smaller than the work done by the ideal engine. Also, by looking at this diagram, we can see that the peak pressure is not at the top dead center, but a little bit after the top dead center. This is because the ignition in real life is not instantaneous. Additionally, the work of pumping causes the intake and exhaust stroke for the actual auto engines to have an apparent. Pressure differences. In real life, the frictional force in each part of this engine, the blowdown losses, and the gas leak losses would all cause the actual auto engines to lose energy and efficiency. Lastly, you should notice that none of these processes are purely isovolumetric or adiabatic. All these phenomena and losses lead to the fact that. The actual efficiency of a real auto engines is much lower than the idealized value, normally about 30%. Qualitative understanding is a powerful tool. However, we must check if the math behind Otto's engine holds. More specifically, how are pressure, temperature, volume, and total energy affected? In this case, the classic PV diagram is more than useful, as we can visualize individual phases. In the first phase, we are only replacing air with different gas. Thus, the volume is increased while all the other variables stay constant. The boundaries for volume are defined by the geometry of our engine. With all the initial conditions, we can finally do some work, literally, because the next one is an adiabatic process, where, as we all know, is no heat exchange. As the volume decreases, gas is being pressed. 
This can be described by equations for an adiabatic process. After reaching minimal volume, we transition to the ignition phase, where the gas suddenly heats up. The pressure will grow linearly with temperature, while volume must remain the same. The next two processes are exactly the same as the last two, but in reverse. The importance of the PV diagram arises now, as it can nicely display the total work produced by the engine. However, where did this energy come from? It's certainly not for free. That's why we also show you the less known temperature entropy diagram, which shows us added heat to the system. To satisfy laws of thermodynamics, these two areas must be equal. Fortunately, no physics was violated.